Hello, my name is Brandon Weekly with Microchip Technology, and today I'm going to be giving a general overview of the CEC 1736 Trust Shield configurator as it is available in our Trust Platform Design Suite. Before we get started, we recommend you check out our Microchip University course on the CEC 173X Trust Shield. It'll help you understand the general purpose of the part, what each of its individual use cases or features are, and how it can generally help you enhance your platform firmware security and resiliency. Now, the CEC 173X Trust Flex Configurator is here to help you configure each of these individual use cases or features. Whatever features you need for your platform, you can stack these use cases together on one chip and then apply it to your platform so you can have whatever security needs met. Some of the key features include Secure Boot, Spy Monitor, and SPDM attestation. My current build of, of Trust Platform Design Suite has configurators for Secure Boot and Spy Monitor. But as seen in the Microchip University course, there is much more functionality to the part, and all of these use cases and features are coming to TPDS very soon. It also helps you provision or upload your keys and certificates and code images that we will be verifying with Secure Boot and Spy Monitor and the other features that are available. All of this you can do in the CEC 173X Trust Flex Configurator. It is important to note that we do have a Trust Custom Configurator. However, it is more expensive and it requires a software license agreement with Microchip in order to use. Now to get started with this configurator, there are a couple of things that you'll need. The first obvious thing is a laptop or PC that's running Windows or a Linux operating system. We're also going to need some pieces of software, including Microchip's Trust Platform Design Suite, version 2.3.8 or above. It shares some dependencies with the MPLAG X integrated development environment, version 6.05 or above, so you will need to install that as well. And lastly, you're going to need the CEC 1736 development board or the EV19K07A that is available for purchase on Microchip Direct. Before we move on to the configurator, there are a couple of important things to note about the CEC 1736 development board that you can see here. First is that it comes equipped with a socket that you can use to swap out different 84 pin package CEC 1736 parts. The reason that this is important is that the CEC 173X parts come with an OTP block or one time programmable block, which is used to program some of your security preferences that you'll use. Once it's written to, it cannot be rewritten, so it's important for you to be able to swap out parts and burn your OTP blocks as you go until you arrive at the security preferences that you want. To power the board, we do have a 5 volt connector here, but it also receives power from these two micro USB connectors or, or ports. The top one here will let you interface with the CEC 1736 that's in the socket here. And then the bottom one will let you interface with the onboard application processor, which in this instance is an MEC1723. There's no real application where you're going to be using this particular chip as an onboard application processor. It's just here for demo and development purposes. But the CEC1736 is agnostic to whatever application processor you do want to use. You just need to be sure that you boot from code that is housed in an external spy flash. Now that we have our development board with our chip set up, we're going to navigate into the Trust Platform Design Suite where we're going to be able to customize the security features to your specific use on your platform. So once we have TPDS open, we're going to navigate into this Configurators tab. And here in this Trust Flex column, you see that we have an option for CEC 173X Trust Flex. So we're going to click there. And this first page that comes up gives you some general information about the tools that you're going to need to develop with this part. Gives you some educational material as well. And of note, in order to program these settings to your board and to your chip, you're going to need a pick kit for debugger so that we can program the spy flashes that are on the board. Now the system configuration page is where you're going to make the majority of your high-level decisions as to what features you're going to use and what hardware package you're going to use. So that hardware package question is the first option here. We do have the option to only secure one spy line with the 64 pin package of the CC 173X. We also give an option to secure, again, one spy line, but with the 84 pin package. So one of these, uh, one of these spy lines is just dormant. We do have some customers that use this. So if you have a special use case that for some reason needs this, that option is there. But if you're using the full superset part to its fullest potential, you're going to select here the CEC 173X 84 pin package with the two spy lines and the uh, uh, two flash components on either side. 
Next, you'll select the features that you're going to use. In this current build that I have, we only have access to Secure Boot and Spy Monitor, but likely in the build that you're using, you will see um, here in this section right here, access to all of these options or those that are customizable, which again, should be all of them. For the provisioning flow, again, for this example, we're using Trust Flex. And then you can unselect different uh, or select pro, uh, packages that you want to generate and program. Again, with one, uh, one given CEC 17.3x part, you're only going to be able to program the OTP block once, one time programmable. So if you've already provisioned the OTP block, then this won't do anything for you on a specific chip. But again, we have a socket on the board so you can swap out chips and burn this as many times as you need. And of course, we can program the internal spy package uh, for the, the features that it uses up here. And then the external spy uh, package with the keys and code images that are necessary to run secure boot and secure updates. We select our device, CC1736 versus CC1734. This essentially is the decision as to whether or not you're going to need side channel attack countermeasures. The 34 does not have that feature, whereas the 1736 does. Your external spy flash programmer. Uh, again, we can use this pit kit for, but there is also a third party uh, spy flash programmer called uh, Deddy Prog. They have a series of spy pro uh, flash programmers that you can select if that is the option that you're going to use. And then the size of your code images, you will select that there. Now, it will be their own videos going uh, us deep diving into each of these. Uh, security features. So I'll simply show what it looks like here at the top level. Again, under this device configuration drop down, we currently have Secure Boot and Spy Monitor, but you will likely see many more options here. Under Assets, this is where you will be able to upload and provision your keys, certificates, your uh, code images for both your external spy flash and your Soteria code images, uh, which again is uh, so Soteria is the firmware that runs on the part that tells it how to run the security features that you have set. And then ultimately, we have other tools here on the bottom that uh, that you can use to import specific user settings if you need to in your uh, TPDS package. Thank you for watching this overview of the Trust Platform Design Suite Configurator for our CEC 17.3x platform root of Trust controller. If you want to learn more about the device, please check out our free online Microchip University course that we've made about it. There will be more videos in this particular series that go over how to set up each of the individual use cases supported by this part in Trust Platform Design Suite.